uns immer stark gemacht. Soljanka, Soljanka, was essen wir bei Tag und Nacht? Soljanka, Soljanka, was stärkt uns in der Liebesnacht? Soljanka, Soljanka, am besten schmeckt sie aus. Hello and welcome back to Mersey Beat Gardening. Um, I'm in the kitchen today um, and we're going to do some cooking. Um, um, you may have been watching um, what's unfurled in, in Ukraine. Uh, it's a terrible situation there and last night I heard that a nuclear power station had been attacked. Um, it's very frightening for us all. Um, a few years ago, uh, just after the Berlin Wall came down, myself and Catherine, uh, quite a few years ago actually, uh, we went on a, um, we went overland, over throughout Europe, to um, Poland. And um, we were really into walking back then. Um, we still are. Um, but back then we, we chose this uh, particular place. It was just after the Berlin Wall had come down. It had only been down for about six years, I think, when we went over there. And um, uh, we went to uh, a, a place um, south of Poland, uh, Zakopane, um, it's not called. Uh, we based ourselves there, but we went walking in the Tatra Mountains, which um, actually border on to Slovakia and the Ukraine. And um, we spent some time there. It was great. It's po possibly one of the best holidays that we've ever had. And we've never forgotten it. And so when all this stuff broke out in the Ukraine, because we were so familiar with that part of the country, if you've been there, then you'll know what the people are like and how friendly they can be. And um, one of the dishes that we were uh, introduced, because there was no infrastructure for tourists back then. We used to... We stayed in people's homes. People opened their homes up to Westerners to come in and, and discover a bit of the, the life in Eastern Poland and Slovakia and Ukraine and stuff like that. So we stayed in people's homes and uh, they would uh, they would cook up these these exotic meals. Well, to us, they were exotic because we were from the West. And one of them was this meal that we're going to be cooking today, uh, Soljanka which is a kind of like it's a um it's a it, it was originated in ukraine in the uh, 16 in the 15th century the uh, 1400s uh, but it's changed and it's uh, it's it's eaten throughout eastern europe um and uh, the germany as the east germans have a particular way of making it and so do the russians and um um, the Polish have a different way of making it, but all the Eastern Bloc countries, it's a very popular dish and it's a one pot dish. And it's kind of like um, it, you throw everything in, basically whatever you've got available. Um, as far as measuring the ingredients are concerned, well, these one pot dishes, remember there is a peasant dishes, right? So um, the, the measurement of the ingredients is not precise. We're not doing French cookery here. We're doing... Uh, stuff that keeps you alive um, in harsh conditions and they would throw in all these kinds of um, preserved meats and um, um, vegetables and whatever was in season but it's made up of uh, uh, particular ingredients um, and um, if if like us you have a, a cupboard full of preserved pickles uh, which if you've got an allotment you have, <laughs> I know we have, I'll show you our, our pickle uh, cupboard, um, then this is an ideal way to use them pickles up. It's a kind of like it's a, a, a suppose it's a soury spicy dish, but it doesn't have to be so spicy, it's up to you how much of the spices you put in. Um, but it, it, it's a great way of using uh, pickles um, and preserved produce off, off the allotments. So we thought, the best way to get to know a culture or a people is through its food. And um, it's important that if you're running a, an allotment and grow your own channel, that we cover things like the ways to prepare the food that we're actually growing. Because uh, 
what could be more important than that because we are actually growing food it's not just the process of of gardening and and you know the techniques of growing things so what's the point of that if you're not showing people how this stuff is preserved and how you how you use it um when you have a glut of it so so to speak so um today we're going to be doing uh soljenka um and uh, i'm going to show you everything that you're going to need for that uh catherine's going to be preparing the dish and cutting things up and stuff um so what i'll do is i'll do what i did last time thanks for all the uh comments that you made on the last video by the way um uh, the pumpkin uh, soup, the 18th century pumpkin soup that we did. Um, so we hope to do more of these recipes. So uh, off the back of that, we, we can do a, a sort of Ukrainian dish now. So uh, I suppose we'll just <laughs> get on with it. Okay, the ingredients are as follows. Onions, garlic, tin tomatoes, green and black olives pitted, sweet bell peppers, Olive oil, homegrown pickles, diced bacon pieces, cured dried sausage, parsley, tomato puree, mustard, black pepper, honey, vegetable stock cubes, paprika, water and fresh soured cream. There you go. So let's get started. Um, Soljenka, yes. Um, it's a, uh, it's a basically it's a soup, um, but um, I, I would rather describe it as a, a stew. It's um, a meat stew, in actual fact, uh, that originated in uh, the uh, Ukraine uh, long before Russia was ever established as a state. It's from the um, 15th century. So we're looking at the 1400s that it can be dated back from, but it could be even earlier than that. So the first thing to do is um, cut up our onions, two onions, um, roughly chopped. And then we've got some, this is homegrown garlic, by the way. We've, we're using about five or six cloves of uh, homegrown garlic, which um, basically, we is a chopped and um, um, crushed, just to get all the uh, aroma out of it. Yeah, and bell peppers. That's another important ingredient. Um, is uh, sweet peppers. Um, there's a kind of Mediterranean feel to this dish. You know, that's probably with it being in the. Um, um, on the coast, the Black Sea linked to the Mediterranean. Um, so so the, there's bell peppers in it and olives and various things like that. So there is a Mediterranean feel to it. And tomatoes as well. Um, sausage is very important. We've, this recipe uses three types of sausage, um, three different meats. It can be any meat you want really, but for here we've used chicken, sausage, uh, one sausage from crack off Polish sausage which is a like a cured ham so we've got chicken ham and um, yeah Catherine loved this ham she's just um, eating bits of it as she's preparing it and so was I actually <laughs> it's really nice uh, it's lovely to just, just a snack on this kind of stuff you know so yeah they're well known for the, the cured um, preserved um, meats in the Baltic states, you go everywhere and they are, you know, everywhere. They put them in everything. They use them for all kinds of dishes, really creative um, things. We found these sausages in the fridge. So it's like um, whatever's available. So we thought we'll put a bit of pork sausage in as well. So that's pork, ham and uh, chicken sausage. So three types of meat for this dish. And that's all the ingredients, the, the fresh ingredients prepared. You can make a vegetarian version of this, by the way. They, they do, in some places, um, make um, versions with using mushrooms. Oh, yes. Homegrown pickles. Can't beat them. These are um, um, pickled cucumbers, 
um, from last year. It's important to separate the um, pickles from the, the water or, or the pickling juice because we're going to use that later on. So we'll start by um, uh, putting a bit of olive oil in the pan and warming that through. Um, and we're going to start with the um, diced bacon and there's 300 and 10 grams of uh, smoked bacon that we're using for this recipe and we're going to fry that um, for a few minutes um, in the pan uh, on a high heat obviously um, and I'm, I'm putting the uncooked meat in which is the um, sausage that we found pork sausage in the fridge that's the uncooked meat. Obviously the cured meat is already cooked. So you don't need to, to put that in. Um, <clears throat> next thing is obviously onions. Um, and cook them through. Go. And um, add to that the, um, the garlic. Okay. Uh, Put in the sausage, uh, the cured sausages, and it starts to really smell like something now. Uh, bell peppers, and uh, the um, homemade, homemade ground pickles. Keep that in. And this is some Polish um, tomato puree. It doesn't have to be Polish, but it just helps. <laughs> English mustard, whatever you've got available. Yeah, Let's whack that in, teaspoon. Uh, yeah, and the juice from the pickles. Don't overdo it with the juice. Add some water, um, just to cover the vegetables. Chopped tomatoes, ton of chopped tomatoes goes in and uh, some um, chili peppers these are our own dried chili, pe chili peppers teaspoon so yeah paprika teaspoon give it a good little stir and two vegetable stock cubes just sprinkle them in. There's a lot going on in this stew. Um, a lot of different flavours. It's definitely um, Eastern European in feel. Um, some of these things you wouldn't find in the West. Uh, black pepper. Just about half a teaspoon of black pepper. Uh, some honey. To add a bit, add a bit of sweetness to the, the whole mix. Um, and some um, green and black olives pitted. Do you like the um, Ukrainian folk music in the background? This one's called Long Live the Ukraine. We should keep this cooking for about uh, one hour and 40 minutes on a, on a slow simmer. At this stage you can, um, you can add more uh, of whatever you fancy, um, um, uh, chili flakes, um, some people like it really spicy and hot in some parts. Or you can add more tomato puree to cool it down, whatever um, takes your fancy really. Just don't add any salt because it's salty enough as it is. Okay, we're coming to the end of the cooking process now. We're just assessing um, how it's going. Um, like all uh, soups and stews, good uh, soups and stews, these are so much better the day after when all the flavours in, have infused. Um, but 
you know, it, it's like anything you want, you want to eat it straight away. So you can have a bowl um, one day and leave the rest to the next day. So much nicer the next day anyway. For the last 10 minutes of the cooking process, add some chopped parsley into the mix and save some aside to garnish. Cut yourself some bread. Um, this is sourdough. Appetit. Don't forget fresh sour cream finishes it off lovely that does. Really makes a difference. And there you go. A taste of Ukraine. Thanks for watching. Bye. See you next time. <laughs>